So after publishing my workflow kind of setup video about the way I record podcasts for Relay FM, I had a few questions about how I use Audio Hijack. Now this video is going to be sort of uh, quick, just a simple screen recording. It is not meant to be a full review of Audio Hijack or giving you an in-depth look at all of its features. I'm just showing you how I use it to record my shows for Relay FM. Audio Hijack has the concept of sessions. These are sort of like job templates, if you will. So I have several set up. Uh, my trick is that I name them exactly what they do. So uh, for instance, this one here, if I opened it up, is just recording from my USB Pre 2, my audio interface, just to a file. Uh, I use the, the uh, peak meters here just so I can kind of keep an eye on levels. This is a very simple session. But say that I wanted to change it, you can open up the library and you can drag in all sorts of things. So say that I wanted an EQ, I could drag it where I wanted it. You see how the blocks move around. And then I could go in here and I could adjust this EQ. I could uh, you know, pick a preset or something. Uh, and then this, because the, the signal is going from the input device through the EQ into the recorder, the recorded file would include the changes I implement in the EQ. Probably not a great thing to do, but uh, just an example of how these things go together. And it's really very simple to uh, you know, turn off a block or delete the block as well. So it goes away. Uh, so, but this library has lots of things. You can add things. Uh, and as you can see in a second, you can build really complicated sessions. The one that I use basically every day is this one right here. So it is called USB Pre 2 plus Skype to two waves. And so what this is doing is a couple of things. Uh, up here at the top, again, it's recording from my USB Pre 2. Should give me just uh, a meter to see what's going on. And then I'm recording in wave. People have different opinions on this. I record in Wave because I want a lot of data when I'm editing in Logic. I don't mind the big file size, but if that's a problem, you know, maybe you could go to MP3 or, or something else. But I choose Wave. Uh, I do 16-bit and I do uh, 44,100 hertz. Pe some people do 4,800, uh, 48,000, excuse me. I do uh, 44.1. That works well for me. But again, you can uh, tinker with this and get what you want. And then I record everything in mono because uh, that's how podcast should be, in my opinion. Mono or joint stereo, but mono is fine for this. Up here at the top, you can change your file settings. I have mine named date, time, and then local. So it's, it's telling me in the file name that is my local recording. So if I go into the Audio Hijack folder, you can see uh, this is that, that thing we just recorded. It's got the date. Uh, it's got the time and it says local in the file name. Of course, you can always check the metadata showing that it's the correct file. Um, but this, this session has uh, another section down here uh, where I'm recording audio from Skype. So I've told Audio Hijack, I want you to listen to Skype. In the advanced things, I, I'm telling it to uh, disclude audio input. So it's just capturing audio being generated from Skype. I'm routing that through my USB P Pre 2 is an output device, so I can actually hear what's going on in Skype. Again, I have my, my meters, and again, I'm recording in Wave with the exact same settings. So these, at the end of the day, uh, say that I have a phone call or you know Skype call and record something, I will have a local file and I'll have a Skype file. Both Waves, both the exact same uh, length and size, but one is just my track and one is just... Skype. You can do something like this with Ecamm Call Recorder, uh, which I run when I record, but I also do it here in Audio Hijack. And then you can go from there. So I have this session here, where it's all the same. See, these are all the same blocks. But then I join the audio from uh, here to here. So think, you got to think about this as like a waterfall. So if I am uh, recording here, of course, it's going to launch Skype for me, I think. You can see that it is going from the input device to my recorded file through the compressor and is actually streaming to the Relay live server right now. All this happens when I hit record. If someone were on the Skype call, then you would have uh, audio being piped from this leg into this as well. So you can see how the flow goes really easily in Audio Hijack. And again, I could bring in other sources, other outputs. Uh, if I say that I added a recorder here, then how this would work is I would have a WAV file of me, 
a WAV file of Skype. And then after the compressor, I would have an MP3 of both of these together. So in thinking about your, your flow in Audio Hijack, it may make sense to record before the compressor, because if, you, if it's downstream, again, thinking about a waterfall, then the changes upstream will affect it. So this recorder, recording would have the compressor settings in it. So something to consider when you are laying these things out. And it's very easy to remove a block. You can actually like disable a block. They say that you have a session that sometimes you need this MP3 and sometimes you don't. You could turn it on or off, but I am going to uh, delete it here. So that's a really quick look at how I'm using Audio Hijack. Like I said, it's an extremely flexible tool. You can do all sorts of things, like you can record audio from an application. So here I have one record audio from Chrome, make it an MP3, but then play it through my iMac Pro speaker so I hear it as it's recording. It goes on and on and on. There'll be a link in the description of this video to Audio Hijack's website. You can look through there. The developer Rogue Amoeba does excellent work. Anyways, that's a real quick look at how I use Audio Hijack. Hopefully that's helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.